Are you ready for the future of finance? OpenAI just released ChatGPT's 5 model. And this is the first model I've seen that truly delivers on the promise of AI that can automate and act as a personal finance assistant. A lot of people have been asking me, is ChatGPT 5 just hype or can this really help me? Well, I want to show you the changes that OpenAI has made to ChatGPT 5 and how much they can help you as a personal finance assistant. You have to see this AI in action to believe it. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Mike. I'm a senior finance leader, and over the last decade, I've helped teams everywhere from brand new startups all the way to the Fortune 100 automate more than 20,000 hours out of their workflow. And I want to help you do the same. And ChatGPT5, well, it's going to be a major help in that. If you haven't already, make sure to click the link in the description and to subscribe to my newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. I'm going to send you a copy every single Wednesday, and it's going to make sure that you're on top of all the tools and all the changes so you know exactly what's going on in the world of finance automation and AI and finance. So why should you care about ChatGPT5? Well, OpenAI has found that it is 8% smarter than previous models. That's a huge improvement because the old models were already pretty darn smart. And here's the biggest thing. It's 40% less likely to need back and forth to answer your question. That means if you're working with this in a corporate setting, that's less API calls, the things that cost money, that's less time spent on your AI. Now, when you first open ChatGPT5, it doesn't look like anything has changed, but a lot has changed. ChatGPT5 is already available to everybody with a ChatGPT account. That's both free and paid accounts. If you're on the desktop, it's going to automatically show up. If you're on an iPhone or an Android, you're going to need to update the software to make sure you have the newest model. If you don't update the app, you're only going to see four. Update the app, you'll get number five to pop right in. Now, if you've used this before, the first thing you're going to notice is that if you come up here to ChatGPT5, you're not going to see that long list of models we had before. There was 3.0, the reasoning and thinking model. There were the mini models for faster answers. Now, you've got two options. You've got ChatGPT5, which is the model, and you've got ChatGPT5 thinking, which is slower but will give you more thorough answers. Now, what happened to the rest of the models? Well, this model is one model. It doesn't need all the other models because it's going to analyze your prompt. It's going to think about the prompt, and it's going to decide what model is best. All of those capabilities are in here. The reasoning, the thinking, it's all in here. But it's going to choose the model for you. What does that mean? Well, that means this is the most user-friendly AI model they've ever put out because you don't have to make that decision. The other thing you're going to notice is there's a few more tools available on ChatGPT5. If I come down to the plus sign, I can still add any photos and files. It reviews them and takes them in a lot better than the older models. I still have agent mode. I've done a great video on that. There's a link right here to that. This is going to walk you through how ChatGPT can run processes on its own desktop, letting you work on other things while it does the work for you. I got some truly impressive prompts, so make sure to check that video out. There's deep research, which is going to scour the internet to find as many sources it needs to give you a really thorough and robust answer, all with citations. You can still, of course, create images, but then you can also now ask ChatGPT to think longer. And I think the coolest feature is this study and learn feature. I can go to study and learn and I can say something like, help me learn debits and credits. There's a very basic concept. And it's going to walk you through this step by step acting basically like a professor. So it's going to say, how much do I know about accounting? I have taken, let's just say, two accounting courses on the basics, but I forgot. I do know debits and credits just for the record. This is a great example, though. Okay, so now it's going to skip. It's going to skip the basics. It's going to kind of understand. So it's even better than a teacher or professor because it's immediately adjusting it just to you. And now it's going to start teaching you. One, you have to know the accounting equation. Two, the normal balance rule. So you can use this to go step by step through any topic you want to learn. I'm using finance here because that's what I cover, but you can go through anything, and this is a really cool feature. Have any questions so far? Go ahead and drop them in the comments. I read and respond to every single question, and I'm more than happy to help. So let's look at a quick prompt to see just how much more powerful this is. Now, traditionally, unless you were using one of the reasoning models or agent mode, ChatGPT is basically give a prompt, get an answer then you take the answer and give it back a prompt, and then you kind of keep going with this back and forth. But here, you can get two or three steps out of it. So let's go ahead and attach a file for analysis. I'm going to pull in this coffee shop financials file. This is financials for the F9 Finance coffee shop. 
And then let's ask it to do two things for us. So previously, I would have had to tell it exactly how to analyze this file, but now I'm going to ask it to choose an analysis method and then analyze. Review the attached financials. Okay, so we'll look in the financials. Based on what you see, pick the best available method to forecast out the next six months. Okay, so there's step one. So I'm going to say review it, which previously would have been one step, one prompt. Then I'm going to say pick a method, forecast it, and then give me a visual for the forecast. So we'll say generate the forecast, give me a visual of the forecast. So we're giving it a couple of steps. Now it's going to go off and it's going to select the model. It's going to analyze the data and it's going to do each of these steps. You'll see it's already, it's thinking longer for a better answer. It's going to do the analysis on this. So whereas before it was kind of like back and forth, back and forth, and I had to kind of help it along. Now it's going to do all this work for me in one go. And that's why I say that this is really the first time that AI is having the potential as an assistant. Because before, when we had to walk through that chat, you had to actively be engaged in the AI. Like, yes, you could get a lot of really cool stuff back from it. I've been using those tools. It saves me a ton of time. But this is the first time that you're really seeing these tools go off and be able to do more of their own work without having you kind of hold hands through it. You can already see here, it thought for 15 seconds, it thought for 10 seconds, it's running multiple steps. It's not just that one back and forth. Now, I know that because of this question I asked, this has chosen a reasoning model, but I didn't have to go make that choice and I didn't need to know the AI tools. I know that because I spend a lot of time in these. But this is so much more approachable for the average user. All right, and look at this. So it ran it, it gave me my six month forecast. It's forecasted out several more months, all the line items. It's given me the visual. So this is my sales revenue. It's given me operating income. It's actually a little bit more than I asked for because it gave me both revenue and OI. That's really cool. And then it's coming back and doing the usual chat response saying, here's what I did. So with only six months of actuals, I couldn't do seasonality. I used a pragmatic mix model. That's a pretty good choice. Uh, this gives me something realistic without pretending we can get seasonality. That's true. Then it's telling me what I did. I generated the forecast and some quick receipts so you know the knobs I turned. And then it's offering some additional analysis if you want it. So again, instead of that back and forth, I was able to give it a couple of steps and it came back with honestly quite a good response. So that's the power of ChatGPT. It's a lot more user friendly. There's a couple of new bells and whistles, but the modeling, the reasoning is so much more powerful because it's going to pick the best path and approach for you. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my video on how to prompt AI. I'm going to walk you through step by step my Spark framework, which is the best way to get solid outputs out of AI. I'm going to put the link to that video right here. Definitely check this out if you want to get really good at crafting prompts to get the most out of ChatGPT5. I'll catch you over there. Until then, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.